Joko na mama, aga me bura lelo ye buru. Be all the glory. 
in Jesus mighty name please put your beautiful hands together for Jesus for Jesus and you may be seated in the presence of the Lord is my your breaking limits congratulations God's word for all this month have been financial fortune is my heritage in Christ and we've been joining on gateways to financial fortune today we are trying to conclude on that so we're looking at part four please i encourage you to get a teaching on the first service very powerful um you need to know the things you need to do and avoid so that you can enjoy fortune and not experience misfortune now by the grace of god we're going to build up in this service is a financial fortune banquet banquet means take as much as you want amen some of us go to some parties and it's a buffet you just go there you serve yourself you take as much as you want this financial fortune banquet take as much as you want come with me to malachi chapter 4 i'll read one to two fortune simply means a large amount of money or asset or weight or substance affluence malachi chapter 4 1 to 2 i take my test for behold the day cometh that shall burn as an oven and all the proud yea all that do wickedly shall be stubborn and the day that cometh shall burn them up saith the lord of hosts that he shall leave them neither root nor branch but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and you shall go forth and grow up as cows of the store so me i will go up it doesn't matter how many people are going down i will go up that is god's word for you and nothing will change it is it okay precious people of god the world is facing the worst economic crisis in history and from all prophetic scriptures this is just the beginning the Bible calls it a day of gloominess and of darkness where multitude shall be much pain. And that is still ahead, according to Joel chapter 2, 1 to 2. The earth is already burning like an oven. One thing about the oven is that you may not see the fire, but you can't deny the effect of the heat. It's already burning. Many nations' economies crumble. But the truth is this, and this gladdens my heart, in the midst of this, there are some people that such will not affect. They will say, be going up. <laughs> Growing up and going up. And the news I have for you is that you are part of that. That when they say there's a casting down, you are now be saying there's a lifting up. Somebody will say, Pastor, are you wicked? Pastor is not wicked. I'm not the one that says so. And I'm not the one that wrote the Bible. The earth is already burning. The Babylon six, the Babylonian system and economy has failed. That financial holocaust everywhere. There's famine. There's hunger. Everywhere. But there are sets of people that are exempted. The people that have been going for, the people that have been growing up, the people that have been enjoying breakthrough. Now hear me, and I pray for you. In the midst of the financial horror, God will be giving you financial honor. In the midst of this economic horror, God will be giving you economic honor. In the name of Jesus. Why am I saying this? When money failed in Egypt, this is not the first time. This is not the first time you're experiencing famine. This is not the first time, even, and it will not be the last. So don't be afraid. When money failed in Egypt, the Israelites had abundance at Goshen. I welcome you to your own Goshen. The Egyptians were selling their assets as a time they sold all their land and they told Joseph, buy us. They were selling themselves. But if you read that Genesis 47 verse 27, 
the people of God were having abundance in the midst of famine. God has not changed. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So it doesn't matter the economic hardship the world is facing today. Lockdown or no lockdown, your destiny will not be locked down. Your finances will not be locked down. I told God before that even in this lockdown, there are people who are making more money. I read, I read some essay recently, the, the richest man in the world, uh, um, the vessels. They said he added five trillion in one day to his words in the midst of lockdown. I want to also make you to know and understand that poverty is not good. It degrades man. One of the greatest things the devil uses to degrade the dignity of man is poverty. And it's not for you. It's not for me. Because Jesus paid the price for your poverty and my poverty. Everything Jesus did was significant. He became poor so that you, through his poverty, may become rich. Look at the poverty of Jesus. It is not even if you look at the poverty of Jesus. If you look at the picture of Jesus, painted of Jesus in the Bible, he wasn't even poor. But the Bible looked at that as poverty. A man that had a thief as an accountant and his money refused to finish. A man that soldiers will be struggling for his clothes. A man that will host his apostles and he will take the upper room, the penthouse, to host them. <laughs> A man that will enter a ship, another little ship with him, escorts. And the Bible says that's poverty. Glory to God. You will not see poverty. Every generational poverty in any family are commanded to be destroyed. Every form of economic misfortune, economic hardship are commanded to be ended in the name of Jesus. So poverty makes people to be hated. That's why you should not be poor. I want you to hate it with your blood. Poverty makes you to be hated, free of charge. You don't need to commit adultery or anything. Just be poor, they will hate you. That's what the Bible says. And I discovered, why do they, I asked myself one day, why is it that the poor even hate the poor? <laughs> and I discovered is that most times they live in the same neighborhood and are struggling for scarce resources. So you will see the other one as his enemy. Struggling with the same scarce resources. I'm not the one that says so. Look at Proverbs 19, verse 4 and 7. He said, even the brothers of the poor hate him. He called them, come, come, come. They say, I beg, stay on your own. Have you not, you, some of us have even done like that. And you see that in our society today. If anybody is rich, some people will go and link it to themselves. They may be foul. They're not even from the same country. They're not even from the same state. Not even from the same time. He says, our brother, my, my, my uncle, my cousin, my dish, they threw away to him hook themselves there. Even their own blood relation, you tell them, you say, don't ever mention that name here. Nobody will hurt you because of poverty. In the name of Jesus. Nobody will hurt you because of poverty. But you see, the way out of the scourge of poverty, out of the scourge of misfortune, financial misfortune, out of the scourge of lack, out of the scourge of financial distress, out of the scourge of indebtedness, out of the scourge of every form of financial shame and embarrassment, is working in the covenant. If you must to continue to go up in financial affluence, you must practice the covenant. Deuteronomy 8:18. Somebody may ask, why do I need to practice the covenant? Because the power to make weight is hinged on it. And if you don't have the power to make weight, it's a lot of continuum. Deuteronomy 8, 18. You shall remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee the power to get weight. That he may establish the covenant which he swore to thy fathers, even as it is this day. So the covenant is a spiritual hammer to name poverty. When you are trading in the covenant, blessings come to you cheaply. Blessings come on you and overtake you, regardless of the economic climate. 
There is no climate that can withstand the covenant. There's no economic lockdown. There's no failing of money that can withstand the covenant. That's why each and every one of us who must run into the covenant as a New Testament act of safety. When Noah was building the ark, they were laughing at him. <laughs> but when the rains came, they understood. Everyone was swept by the flood. But Noah and his household who ran into the ark were preserved. The covenant is our own ark of safety from every form of economic holocaust, from every form of economic famine, from every form of financial embarrassment. The day you locate these truths and you begin to appropriate it to your life, you will see unusual changes. Check our covenant fathers, you understand. Abraham, he experienced famine, but how did he get out of it? Covenant. Isaac, how did he get out of it? Covenant. He said, stay in this land. I will bless you in this land. And I will establish the oath I swore to your father. It was a covenant, sir. It wasn't the property of Abraham that made Isaac rich. Stop waiting for your father's property. It was the covenant of Abraham. Jacob experience the same. All the covenant fathers, it was the covenant. The covenant is there for God's better strategy for his people out of every form of economic holocaust. If you work for our fathers, it will work for us. Hide your head under the covenant. Glory to God. Financial, li financial liberty will be yours in Jesus' name. Now somebody is here today hearing me. I want you to write down your turnover. Write out, go and check your, your, your balances in your accounts and everywhere. Check your financial base as I'm talking to you today. If you will follow what I'm sharing with you, by this time next year, it will be nothing less than 10 times your present size. I'm not talking to you what you have not proved. I'm talking to you what you have followed. They are not cunningly devised papers. There are things you have followed and we have arrived where we are. It can also make you. Glory to God. Because when you talk about some of these things sometimes, some people don't believe because they don't think it's possible. But it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. The ordinance of the day and the night, the ordinance of heaven and earth, is what the covenant is anchored on. So, in as much as the day is in place, the night is in place, the heaven is in place. The earth is in place. The covenant cannot be broken. So until you clear the ordinance of heaven and earth, as you clear the ordinance of day and night, that's when you can stop the covenant, which is behind the power to make words. Read Jeremiah 30, 33, 20 to 25. You understand better what I'm talking about. This is what Bishop Oyedebo discovered that made him to shout, I can never be poor. Because he has seen it. <laughs> Jackpot. So whatever you are doing in the covenant, in as much as the heaven is bearing you witness, the earth is bearing you witness, the day is bearing you witness, the night is bearing you witness, nobody can stop you. No witch, no wizard can stop your blessing. And that's why when some people talk like that, you think they are proud. They have something they laid hold on that is beyond the devil. It's important that we understand the terms of the covenant and the details of the covenant. I'll be showing us from the beginning of the month. We have been showing us. Please get the combination of all these teachings. You must understand the details. Because it's the one you don't know that you're not doing that is undoing you. So get the details. For instance, in the covenant, we don't labor to be rich. We labor to be blessed. Are you getting me now? <laughs> in the world, people labor to be rich. But in the covenant, we labor to be blessed. Many are laboring to be rich. If you are laboring to be rich, the money will be flying and you will be running after it. You will be chasing after it. You won't catch it. But when you are laboring to be blessed, when you are blessed, the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? That's one of the things that makes the covenant so unique. So stop laboring to be rich. Labor to be blessed. 
when you are blessed, no matter what you are doing, whether you are a cleaner, you can still do something that even somebody that is not in the covenant cannot do. That's why you can see a cleaner building a house and a professor is borrowing to eat. It is not in your profession. In every profession, there are people who are not doing well. There are people who are doing well. It is not in your size. It's not in your color. It's not in your age. It's not in your academic qualification. It's not in the result you came out from, from school. It is in the covenant you are practicing. Get understanding. So when we are telling us, for instance, to get in the covenant, pay your tithe, give your offerings, give to the poor, give to the needy, and I mean to prophets, give to your parents and all that. All of them have their place. I used to tell people, if you are not paying tithe, you will not enjoy the other blessing. It's true. You will not. How many of us have killed chicken here before? How many of us? If you have killed chicken before, raise your hand now. Why are you pretending now as you don't eat it? Now if they bring it, now you clean your mouth with it. How many of our kids chicken? Please raise your hand. Thank you so much. Chicken Killers Association. <laughs> now, if you if you are, if you are a genuine chicken killer, eh? if you open the chicken, what do you do first? You remove that greenish sack that the liver. It's called bye. It's called what? Bye. Why do you remove it? If it opens, it will spoil the whole meat. Three of us. You cut it and keep it one side. That is what tight is like. Any day you eat your tight, everything will be bitter. Bitter. And that's what they have been causing misfortune for people. They don't know. All manner of problems. Because they're eating what is not eating. You blame Adam every time. You say, Adam, Adam, you are the cause of the problem of mankind. Why did you eat the forbidden fruit? But you are eating it. By eating your tithe. It was forbidden fruit Adam ate. God said, all the trees in the field you can eat, but this one, respect it. Keep it for me. Don't touch it. Adam said, that's the one I want to eat. <laughs> the same way with somebody who is not paying the tithe. Out of the God said, take 90%. Leave 10% for me. He said, God, why? This is the one I want to. That's why I, I, I will start with it first. You understand? God said, I don't understand. Every one of them, they have their ways, their own places. Glory to God. That's the job, by the way, we have said all those things in the course of the month. Please, let's quickly see, as I begin to close in this service, vital keys to a world of financial fortune. Vital keys to a world of financial fortune fortune. Number one is that you must be spiritually minded. You must be what? You must be what? Many people are not prosperous because they are not spiritually minded. Now hear me, in this kingdom God will prosper you as you prosper inside. The prosperity without starts from the prosperity within. Third John 2, I pray, New King James says, that you'll be in health and prosper. That's God's prayer point for you. That you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospered. Some don't study the Bible. They don't get in, they don't pray. They don't engage in any spiritual they say that they want to prosper. Hey, that's why misfortune is eating what you are laboring. Because there are forces that want that are stronger than you. Fighting against what you are doing, the devourers and the spiritual rodents. When you plant, there are spiritual rodents that want to eat your what you planted. But your spirituality helps you to wage off such forces. Say with me, I hear. So it is. There are many details involved in the covenant. It's not your thank God for giving. Give is is there, but there are other things that follow it to make it work. You don't go and sow your seed and go and sleep. Weeds will take over the place. You see, go there and weed it and maintain it until the time, of, even during the time of harvest. You see, you have to go and harvest it. You don't leave it there. Glory to God. So, you must understand. I told you here before if you understand farming, you won't have problem with kingdom prosperity. So, be spiritually minded. Romans 8 6. 
To be spiritually minded is life and peace, but to be carnally minded is death. If I tell you to choose between life and death, you, you, the answer will be obvious. What will you choose? Life is obvious. But many a time you choose death without knowing. Anytime you are carnally minded, carnally oriented, you are choosing death. That's why you see a man, he's laboring, he's making money, but he will go and be committing adultery, following women. The Bible says his word will be in the hand of strangers. He won't understand. Why am I making money? But I'm not seeing what I'm doing with the money. Read Proverbs 6, 7, 5, 6, and 7. You understand what I'm talking about. So you must mind the details. Be spiritually minded. Godliness is profitable unto all things, including financial fortune. It's profitable unto all things. Which means ungodliness is unprofitable. Do away with it. Some do business with others. They just cheat them and think that they are smart. It's a lie. Somebody stronger than you will cheat you better. And at the end, you'll be a fool. <laughs> I call that prosperity of the fool. As a partridge seated upon the earth and hatched in all. So he is he that gets rich but without rights. He stays now. He goes and thinks that he's smart. But before you know it, listen to me. Any money. For, don't forget what I'm about to say. Don't forget about this all the days of your life. Any money you get that is not by God's means, the devil will always give you an assignment where the money will be sent, sent, spent. That is why you see that somebody that is stealing, find out, check very well, you will start committing a, a immorality. Or <laughs> you will start drinking or smoking free of charge. Are you getting me now? You must find, the devil must give you where to spend that money. Have you not seen people now? You are hungry. You tell them, I'm hungry. Please give me food to eat. He said, follow me. And he will follow you. You follow him. He will take you to bar. He will not buy you food, but any money you want to drink, drink him. He will pay. But to give you food to eat, he will refuse. Have you seen something like that before? <laughs> That's the assignment. <laughs> he will not use it to do anything meaningful for anybody. May God give us understanding. That's not just of our vlog. Number two is engage tirelessly in the covenant practice. Engage tirelessly. It is not once and for all. It's once and again. Say with me once and again. Yes. Paul said, you did it, you brought to, you know, and gave to me. Not that, that I needed it, but something will abound in your account. And he said it was once and again. The problem with many people, they do it some few days. And they didn't see the result. They just give up. If you are not weary in well doing, you will reap when you faint not. Galatians 6 9. Tirelessly. You are paying your tithe tirelessly. You are giving offerings tirelessly. That's why you determine that every service I must give like this. Tirelessly. You are giving to the poor tirelessly. You are giving to prophets tirelessly. You are giving to, the, to, 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 to your parents tirelessly. You are giving to help humanity tirelessly. It is not once and for all. It's once and again. Now hear me. If you sow your seed this season, the farming season, next farming season, will you say because I sow last year, I'm not going to sow again? But why are you doing like that in real life? He said, God, you know, the one I sow the other time, I never see him. <laughs> it's consistency. Now hear me. Why do you need that consistency? You are the one that determines when your financial cloud is filled, not God. And until your financial cloud is filled, it doesn't empty itself on the earth. Until the cloud is filled with rain, it does not empty. So you keep feeding it, doing it, doing it. When it feeds, it empties on you. Then you, you separate the seed to sow and then the bread to eat. You continue sowing the seed, just like a farmer. After harvest, you will separate the seedlings to use for the next planting season. Is it true? <laughs> so why is it that when the thing now happens, you eat everything? And when he sees what this is, he says, God, you understand. God, you understand. Empty hand inside of offering basket. Or empty uh, envelope. Or you go and do union offering. So that they will not call you. 
God understands. He understands what you are doing. May God give us understanding. Say with me, I hear. Okay. Number three. Seek continuous guidance in all your endeavors. Seek what? Continuous guidance in all your endeavors. God blesses us when we follow his leading. Many lack people face in life because of lack of divine direction. Lack of divine shepherdhood. Psalm 23 verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want or I shall not lack. So if you are lacking, it is because you are not following his leading. No sheep goes to look for food. The shepherd looks for the food and directs the sheep where the food is. If you are not following him, you will suffer misfortune. Because you will not know where the food is. You don't know it. It's only the shepherd that goes to look for it. How many of us parents here allow our children to go and look for food? Whether they pay you salary or not, you will look for food for them and say, come and eat. Three of us. That is how God is with us. If you are following his leading, he knows where you can go and get breakthrough. I'm the Lord that teaches you the way you should go. Or that teaches you to profit. That leads you in the way you should go. Isaiah 48 verse 17. And verse 21 he said, when he led them in the wilderness, can you imagine how wide the wilderness was? They fasted not because God knew where they would get water. God knew where to meet their needs. Please make up your mind from today to be one that follows whatever God takes you or whatever God shows you. There are two ways God leads us through our eyes. And I pray for you, may you receive seen eyes. And through our ears, may God give you hearing ear. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Hear this. The shepherd owns the sheep his voice. But the duty of the sheep is to follow the shepherd. God owes you and I his voice. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So his own is to show you, give you his voice. Your own is to follow. But many a time God has told us what to do. As I'm talking now, there are some people God is reminding you now as I'm talking. He has told you certain things to do. You refuse to do it. The time he said, so all your salary, I'm going to change your story. You had it. You increase the volume of the TV so that you won't hear the voice. <laughs> the time he witnessed to you to bless somebody. And that, you can't outgive God. Anytime God gives you any instruction, is to change you with distinction. So be sensitive to follow his divine leading. Finally, number four for this we're going to see more because of the services. Rejoice in the Lord. And that's why we're going to be praising God. Rejoice. And again I say rejoice. Let the people praise thee, O Lord. And let all the people praise thee. Then the earth will yield her increase. Psalm 67, 5 to 7. Then the people will, all the people will fear him. Now, now hear this. God has a system. Understand the system. Paul planted, Apollos watered. God gave the increase. Now hear this. Except your praise comes up, God cannot raise you. You have sown your seed on the ground, but you are to water it. One of the ways to water our seed is through our praise of God. Your seed on the ground will dry when there is no water. So, one way we water our seed for increase is by giving God the glory due to him. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Because he was fully persuaded that what God had promised God is also able to do. Be a man or a woman that gives praise to God. Habakkuk chapter 3, 17 to 19. He said, even though the fig tree will not blossom, there be no fruits in the vines. 
and the palm olive, the pomegranate tree, and all the trees of the field will not produce. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. For he will make my feet like a hind feet, and he will make me to walk in my high places. Everything dries when joy dries. Everything dries when your praise dries. If you don't want to be raised, be a man, a woman that is always giving praise to God. Rise on your feet. Please rise in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. So as you keep rejoicing, you have access to your returns. Without joy, you can't take anything from God. In a short while, we're going to pray. We're going to also rejoice in, and to give our thanksgiving seed to God. But before we do this, I want to give an opportunity to everyone here that is not born again. You cannot be spiritual if you don't have Jesus inside you. As a matter of fact, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit of God. You can't also escape the misfortune in the world today, the Holocaust in the world today, except you embrace salvation. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3. He said, how shall we escape if we neglect salvation? The ark is already burning like an oven. But if you want to escape, the first thing is to run to the ark of safety. Run to Jesus. Through Jesus, you can have access to the blessing. Now, somebody is here, you want to say, Jesus, be my Lord and my Savior. Please put your hand on your chest right now. I want to pray with you. Somebody is here also, you gave your life to Jesus someday. You're no more there because there's no peace, there's no joy. And you want to say, I'm returning to you, Jesus, return to me. Put your hand also in your chest. And somebody is struggling with certain evil habits and you know without Jesus, you can't escape. Why not turn to him right now? Why not turn to him right now? Please, if you are among the category of people I mentioned, put your hand on your chest, pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord, be my Savior. I believe in my heart, you are the only Son of God. You die and you resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart and with my mouth, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Write my name now in the book of life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I return to you. Return to me. In Jesus' mighty name. Please we pray that prayer with me. Wave your hand to Jesus wherever you are. Pray, pray that prayer with me. Oh, there are sincere people here. Please wave that hand to Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please carry your bag, your Bible, whatever you came to church with. Go to the front of the altar now. Please come, 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 come. Come to Jesus the way you are. Please come to him the way you are. Come to him the way you are. He loves you the way you are. Come to him the way you are. Please come, come, come. Take that step right now. Come with everything you came to church with. Walk to him right now. Come to him right now. Come to him right now. Come to him right now. Somebody is coming. I got my mind made up that I will come back. I want to see my Jesus someday. I got my mind made up that I will turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. Goodbye, world. Goodbye, world.
Jesus, I've come to you in this financial banquet service, financial fortune banquet service, but I'm bearing poverty today in my generation. Divorce me and my generation from poverty. Lord, I ask of you today. Empower me to walk in the covenant thereby launching me to the realm of financial fortune, financial flourishing. Take me to the level of more than enough. Terminate every financial shame and reproach. Make an utter end of every form of misfortune, poverty, issue, embarrassment in my life. Now for all of you in front here, you are blessed, you are blessed, you are blessed. Please turn to my left, turn to my left. God bless you, please. God bless you, go this way. God bless you. Jesus! Let poverty be terminated in my life, in my family, in my generation. Launch me to the realm of financial fortune. Make an utter end today. I give you glory and praise. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' glory.